Welcome back to Mishpachas Take Two. There is not a week in the magazine that there is a topic that comes up again and again and again. The topic is Shadokhim, the economics of Shadokhim, the geography of Shadokhim, the social aspects of Shadokhim, the stigma associated with Shadokhim. It's an opportunity and somewhat of an honor and certainly a pleasure to sit with three of the most preeminent, experienced, uh, not only uh, most insightful Shadokhim I know, but really most compassionate Shadokhim I know, each one of them in their own way has not, not only seen it as a profession in the sense that they read and suggest Shadokhim and talk to people, but they've gone the extra mile in terms of helping those families reach home plate if it's a financial way, if it's in an emotional way. Each one of them is a good friend. It's a pleasure to welcome each of you. Thank you for being here. Let's start with the Kayan of the Cats, of Shlomo Lewinstein, and of Maya Levy. It's a pleasure to have you, really, to, to be sitting with all three of you. Um, I, I guess I would want to know just uh, quickly, just let us know. We'll start with the tzaddik, because a kind. What, what, what happens? How does somebody become a shatchan? You wake up when you're 11 years old. You said, "Like I want to be a shatchan." What do you want to be when you grow up, tzaddik? A shatchan. Like, like a, what, what makes somebody a shatchan? Yeah, I went to shatchan school for a couple of years. Harvard. And became a a it's really uh, there's no really rule on how to become a shatchan. I knew a lot of people, and I was next door neighbors to Rabbi Lewinstein, and I once thought of an idea. I saw two people that look alike, and it happened to work. And then, um, you know, I had a couple years that I would just... Rabbi Lewinstein out. encouraged you or he discouraged you? No, he, no there's no way of knowing from Rabbi Lewinstein's reactions <laughs> if he liked it, if he didn't, but I kept on trying. And um, it sort of evolved over time. I was more of like a dabbler. I didn't actually read Shadokhim for the first couple of years. I tried to really learn the skill. And then, and then once it started, then it just comes rushing at you and there's no stopping, even if you want to stop. But, when you say uh, rushing it, you mean out of a sense of achrayas, or because a, you get addicted to it, like in any profession, that you, you really get a rush? In the beginning, there's a rush, like a, a lot of, I think, a, a startup shatchanim, you get a rush out of a date, it's very exciting, and then over time, you lose the rush for the date, you want rush, you get a rush for making shudachim, and from the amount of people that need help, all of a sudden, if you put up a sign, you're a shatchan, you're going to have a hundred people at your door, even if you don't know what a shudach looks like. But over time, you just, I, got, I do know a lot of people, even though I'm from Cleveland, and there's not so many people there. But, but I did have a, a, some kind of social. I like, I like people. And over time, I had a good Rebbe, Rebbe Lewinstein. Rebbe Levy was still a little snobbing me out in the early <laughs> days. But uh, over time, I, it just evolved. And Baruch Hashem, I'm still here being a Shachan. So it's a great Rebbe question. Uh, not sure myself how it got started. Um, I think uh, part of it was I got married younger than the rest of my chevra, and a little bit I was dabbling, and you Meaning know, because you had a lot of single friends, because you were yeah, young. I didn't, I wasn't like a big people person. I didn't grow up seeing shidduchim read. I just somehow one shidduch worked out, and the next thing you knew, I was a shatchan. Those days were a lot different than today. There was no, there was no shatchanim in BMG. May Mayor and I started around the same time, but it wasn't like today that the yeah, I was before. So there wasn't so many shatchanim. It was, you know, so people started coming over to me. And the next thing you knew. Uh, but Bachel would come over and introduce themselves to you. Yeah, or, or people said, I have a sister, I have a sister-in-law, a cousin, a neighbor. And uh, in the beginning, I have to admit, I don't think I knew what I was doing. It was just a couple of lucky guesses. And, uh, you know, I got the hang of it and still doing it today. Where are we leaving? I started <coughs> as a monk who was a young man in yeshiva at that point and, and yeshiva came over to me and said he wanted to get a bunch of chavra together to become shalchanim because it was a need then. I mean, the need today is that much greater because there's not that many more shalchanim since those days, since us three. And he put together a whole bunch of young light to become shalchanim. What made him to think like the people were suited? Why he thought, I mean, well, I'm not sure what got him to, he, he wasn't involved, and he was a little bit involved himself, but we got together a bunch of guys we used to meet, I think on Wednesday nights, didn't last too long, and I'm the only one pretty much left standing from that group. And I, the first time I officially became a shach, I went to the Smedish for 11 o'clock, I went over to, a, today he's married to 20 something years, he has a daughter in Shadokhan himself, I said, I'm a shach, I said, can I have your mother's number? And that mother was the, from the nicest mothers to deal with, that I got me started. So, I mean, I, it wasn't the first shidduch that I had read. I, I always thought your father has a school, a very, very prominent school. I always thought like it was sort of a thing. Your father asked you to help out with the girls. It wasn't, no, wasn't like that no, at all. No, I mean, I, I, I had read my sister to my best friend. That was my first shidduch that I did. 
But after Meaning that, even before your official shot, right. you always had a, right. a knack for, and, and, for this type and, of And the first few shidduchim I did were not even in BMG. That was the cute thing, was the Nary Sro boys. Really? So the, <laughs> but then, slowly but surely, once you get started, and again, there have been times when you want to get out because it could be frustrating as anything, but you know, but the, the, the excitement when you do make a shidduch could carry on for, I mean, really? everybody could agree to that, probably. And I imagine that the disappointment when you, it looks like you're about to make a shidduch and then it falls apart probably is that That's the times you want to get out. As well. the, 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 the sight is that if you could wake up in the morning and say, I want to do this again, you could do it again. If, if it still bothers you the next morning, <laughs> then you have a problem. And we're talking about uh, this, this question. I would love to hear from any of you on this. You started very degrees. I guess you're in this the shortest, but still a long time. Probably 15 years already are you doing this? A little more. A little more than 15 years, and both of you are... You're, 25 close years. to 25 years, right? Yeah. And both of you, wow. What, what would you say is the biggest change from 25 years ago till today? Uh, people more desperate? Is there more Midas Hadin involved? More panic? More Because there's a lot of talk, like I wrote in Mishpacha magazine, you, or any magazine, or any newspaper, or any website, there's so much uh, hysteria about it. I, there's that many more people. I mean, it's the... the, the okay, the but there's that, that many more boys as well. If that's yes, the but it's, it's harder to go through all of them. To just know everybody and... Does it work that when you make a shidduch in a family, like the next kid, you're expected to? Yeah. In Al Shatchan. I, mean, I, I see one big change, like really a big change is technology, obviously, is a different world. Explain I mean, how technology you, impacts that. Your resume, cell phones, texting, WhatsApp. Made it easier for you, probably. Made it much easier. You could do so much more volume. Like an old grocery store, the guy had to uh, uh, you know, uh, type in every item, and now you can just scan 100 it's items. Quicker. So just the volume. But in a way, it makes you much more excited. You never are not on call now. Right. So it comes also, you're much more chained down. But as, uh, I would say, two huge changes with the technology and also the awareness and the groups that opened up to help different, you know, there's different uh, subcategories of groups that help out specific or even large groups. Let's say Rabbi Bender and his, and his son, you know, they got very involved in, in, in Lakewood, helping out. Uh, different organizations. I do think the out-of-town cities became much more active. So I think there's much more active and activity going on helping the shit. The the sh- and then, of course, that? you have Rabbi Pragro, which, you know, we, we have to deal with him for, for many years, but he's definitely at the forefront. His passion of it. and Yeah, he's too much passion for me, but he's good. Is, uh, I have a question. Like, you know, the worst thing you could do to a doctor today is you can go and tell the doctor, what are your symptoms? Yeah, I Googled it, and, and, the, and it said that my headache, right? They go crazy from that. They went to medical school for eight or nine or ten years for you to tell them what you Googled. How do you view amateur or layman shadokhan? People come to you and they tell you, I thought, do you say, one second, I worked very hard, to, a lot of experience, you know nothing, or do you say, it's not medical symptoms, it's a burden shalom, and... I, I, you know, you're as good as I am. How, how There's do you no such that? thing as an amateur. Why is their idea any less good than our ideas? They think it's a good idea. Meaning, Tzadok could, for example, I, I could read a Shadok and I know that the people are going to go back to Tzadok. So either I could say, don't ask Tzadok, or, or I could tell Tzadok beforehand, they know, this is what I read. You might not agree totally, but if there's no reason why you didn't see it, don't go and from it. I want to go back at something else. I, you know, I, was, I wasn't going to share this, and I don't know if we'll be happy that I am. Rabbi Lewinstein was my shadchan, and in those days, we sat next to each other downstairs in, in BMG. You, you weren't allowed to talk to him during Seder, so he came to first Seder, and you would tell me all the time, my wife wants a learning guy. I have to learn. You have to let me learn first Seder. It means, you know, don't. So I would call your wife by beta star, I think it was. You were very, like pretty inaccessible in the sense that you couldn't just go over any time and talk. You know, once you started first Seder, then downstairs in the, you know, then it was, he was off limits till, uh, till I, I was also off limits. Right, I didn't say it, I didn't say it. You were looking to get married, so you were off limits. Even, the, even during most of the day, um, All of it. The, but now you're always like, oh, you go to, uh, you're going to go to Lancaster with your family on Ben and you're going to pull into the shoal, and there are going to be people coming over to you, right? Yeah. That there's no escape, and they know your faces, and we have this type of media today where everybody's public, and they know exactly what you look like. Is, how, how do you do that? Right, so it, I, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody's like stopping. Meet my. You go to a chasna. Uh, you want to. You want to either enjoy or wish miles stuff or go in and out because you have five chasnas tonight. No way. So one thing is, you just at least people appreciate some level of responding, even if it's a text, even if it's a response. Um, you learn how to over time. You ad- ad- adaptivity. You learn how to have shorter conversations with people and try to be more focused and. It is, it is impossible to, to respond to everyone, and it is very hard. That's why uh, it's, a shidda, it's a job that it's, it's, it is hard to be in the, in the shidduch world. Uh, 
wherever I go, I went, I went to a wedding um, out of town and I did not walk into the hall. I did not walk, I have no idea how the hall looks. I, I flew to there and I was in the hallway and when the chassan came out, I made the shidduch, I gave them a little mazel tov. And it is very, very hard, but it is rewarding and Kali Yisrael needs it. And you have very devoted shadchanim, like, uh, you know. And there's a lot of other very good shadchanim that are not here that are unbelievable also. So it is hard. It's hard, but, uh, you know, we know what we got to do. We have a purpose, and, uh, you know, people are in a lot of pain, and they, they really want help. So, yeah, it's hard sometimes. Like, you know, my wife's waiting in the car. I say, I'll be out in two minutes, and a half hour later, and I'm still not out. But They uh, know, your wife and children know this already, this reality. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yes, but uh, that's what we're here for, so... Do you sometimes yeah. feel like people like aren't normal around you because they're busy posturing that you should think of them as a guy next to you in shul or whatever? Like if you're there, are they are on better behavior or people treat normal? It's, it's cute. I learned in yeshiva in the morning. A, you started yeshiva in the morning? Yeah. You go to yeshiva first day until today? Not the whole first day. But are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Nice. So I sit in the front. I make sure I don't turn around because I, I heard from a bacha once, you know, if Mayor Levy turns around, we have to all of a sudden like look inside the Gemara. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it happens we were a little, me and, me and Lewinstein, we one time, we had nowhere to go, we were in Eretz Yisrael, and we went to meet boys, and, and the place we were supposed to go canceled, they had a kid or something, so we had to go, we had to find the Dira, and there was no Jerusalem Estates then, there were no Waldorfs, so we invited ourselves to my cousin's Dira, and they don't want to go, they don't want us, because like, they have to wake up on time, and they have to like, look like human beings, and um, we told them that if you're yourself, you'll get more points. Don't try to impress us. Yeah, and we slept there on the floor and <laughs> actually made, I think, one or two of the boys shidduchim. And it was lachat free. Everyone woke up exactly when they want to do. And, you know, we, we try not to be pressured. But uh, I do have some places that I have escape rooms. I don't want to see, you know, everyone. But I would think that it helps that, at least when you're dealing with yeshiva bacham, that you guys come from inside the system. So you're well, not blind the to the realities. So like, if a guy, you know, yeah. I was, you just, say uh, I was just in Eretz Yisrael this week. So Bacha took out a cigarette. He says, is it okay if I, if I smoke in front of you? I said, I don't see you smoking. <laughs> Very good. Is, is, is the smoking a question that a lot of the guys still ask? It's still a big it's thing? more vaping now. now. Vaping. Vaping but became the new thing. Do they know um, that whether they say it or not, every Bacha vapes? Do, are they aware of this? Or? I once got in big trouble. Um, we had a, a thing in Lewinstein's house. What was it for? Uh, Rabbi Goldschmidt? Remember we did a thing in the house with Kika, and I said something about smoking, and I got a, a, a lot, a lot of um, pushback. And it's very hard to talk to different crowds, and in certain crowds it's a little more accepted if you like it or not, and in certain crowds it's not. They, I, they, I don't know if anybody likes it, but I, like I think it, it's but just it's, a reality. I said accepted. Accept it. But most people stop when they get married, right? Yeah. They, they all, they all, well, they uh, never uh, smoke. The, the small percentage that smokes today, I would say, right with them. If you're not a heavy smoker, if a guy takes a chasen cigarette, there's nothing wrong with that. And yeah, I don't. And people will get all upset, but that's the fact. Like, every bacher at one point, you, you, you take a random cigarette. But do you but find yourself as had in the position of having tell mothers a lot and say, "Relax, this is a normal thing." Yeah. Uh, like somebody told me he came to zechmash at nine o'clock, or a son smoking, to or me, me he once got a, drunk at a shabbos yeah. and you have to say. That's who, do you find yourself having to be? It, it depends what they heard. Meaning if, if somebody came back to them and said they heard that every Friday night this boy is drunk, what do you going to answer? You know, that's the information they found out. You know? So then you tell them, I hear you. Yeah, 100%. But I'm, I'm just saying that the, the job of shalchan it goes into psychologists, it goes into mashpia, it goes into a million other subcategories where you have to do those kind of things. Probably doing a lot of economics for people also. And have, I'm sure people ask all the time, how much do I need to, what support? Right? You must, and you have to figure out with them. And yeah, 100%. So that's, that's probably, in, in the days of the Gemara, uh, the, the main thing was actually the Nadim. When you look at the Paiskim about what the Shatkin's job, they weren't busy with compatibility. There was, no such, as, the there was no such thing as compatibility until like 100 years ago. So it was pretty much the Nadim. Uh, halakhically, but, um, the, all the sugis of, of Shatkhanas, it was a brokerage on the Nadim. So it, it really was. There was no dating. They didn't have the Hyatt in Warsaw or something, like, or <laughs> Valage in the like, Ocean Place or something. It was mainly just Warsaw like that. Yeah. It was mainly like, uh, it was a lot of it's not. And it is a big pressure, because even before I make a shidduch, or suggest a shidduch, I have to know that it's basically you're in the ballpark. You know what I mean? So How are you supposed to know somebody's finances? The only what they tell you. So either 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 you just ask them, do you plan on doing the regular support, uh, above support, and, and they say, what's regular job? support? 
So, it, you know, it, there, there's a basic bar. If it was rent, if it was a little more than rent, it depends on the girl's job. I find the girl's job is a little more important than the nadin because that's usually the bulk of it. But it is a very, uh, it, it is very tedious and it can be very annoying actually when you deal it with the It all depends money. because some people have this idea in their head it has to come from the parents. I mean, that's... They, they don't, they're not comfortable with the girl's I, I've job. I've had stories where people would say, that's what she's making, what are the parents doing? Because they, she's they making want seven, to feel like she's they're not losing out or because they're worried that what if something happens it, it all she can't depends. Work. You know, you can't get into the mindset of every single parent. But like I, I, had, I had a story, it was, like, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was so comical, it was sad that <laughs> they wanted the boy side to be mechaev to give a certain amount of money. So they, when the parents met, they said, you know, how much, how much are you being, Kema, taking achrayas for? And the parents of the boy were like, you know, hey, we have a boy over here. He's a good boy. Like, you know, then the, the girl side took it one step further. They said, whatever you'll do, we'll double. So the father thought about it of the boy. He came back and says, you know what? I'm going to give $2,000, but since I'm coming out of my comfort zone, I want you to give $5,000. <laughs> like, <it's like laughs> for what? For what? Just like little... Like, I, I'm not sure. Where, like, it got so out of control. And, and you're sitting there and, and listening to these conversations. <laughs> I had a story where a father of a boy called me, a father of a boy who was very wealthy. And the girl side wasn't as wealthy, but he said, I have a top son. They want me to go 50-50, but it's, I have a top son. I feel like I'm not getting a good deal. So I told him, I said, you should be fighting them. I said, you have a, such a special son and you want to give someone else the schus? I said, you should fight for the schus to support your son. Uh, did it work? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> the, the, yeah. Let, let me ask you this. Let's talk about, we're talking about the economics of Shadokim. Let's talk about the economics of Shadchanas for a minute. I, I don't understand how, what a Shadchan does. That means there's no salary, there's no income, there's no fixed income. You get up in the morning, and I'm trying to imagine somebody who's trying to broker uh, uh, mortgages, for commercial mortgages, and he has no idea how many he's going to get done a day or not. You can't live like that. We can't look your wife in the eyes and say, okay, this is what we have for this week, because you never know what it's going to be. That's question A, and question B is, everything in the world went up. You can't fill up your car and gas, like in pay what you paid five years ago. And I don't know if Shadchanas has gone up proportionally. Is that, is that true, what no. I'm saying? It doesn't seem like it's gone up no. that much in the last 20 years, more or less. We're talking within the same Since ranges. Since COVID, it actually did go up. I see they'd go up. Like, uh, you, Who I, decides that? Because this would be a good opportunity to have this conversation. Because people, I, I, I'm not experienced, but I, I married off a couple of kids, Baruch Hashem. So now my friends, I'll call me, what, how much should I give? What shot is? Nobody even knows. What so would, I, so I'm going to give you something real quick. I'm going to try to oversimplify it a little. In Europe, there was, uh, for 500 years, the Aruch Shulchan brings down that there was a formula that was used for Kamat all the years in Europe. It was between 2 and 3% of the Nadin went for the, each side had to give, it depends how hard it was, if there was a river, in those days the Shatchan had to travel, so it was between 2 and 3% of the Nadin each side gave. Now let's just say what does Nadin mean, Nadin doesn't just mean the monthly, it means all the, the clothing and the wedding for the chasana was a big thing, so if you take a, a minimal wedding today, and let's say, uh, let's say you're giving $1,000 a month for five years, which a couple years ago was uh, except today it's a little more. So let's say that's $60,000 plus the chas. Let's say it's $100,000, okay? So it's $100,000 is the minimal nadin that one side gives. So in Europe, if it would be an easy shidduch, you would give $2,000. So a two to $3,000 was in Europe, that means the poor man in Europe that was carrying the water um, was giving 2% of the nadin. So today, where I would say a minimal nadin is, I would say at least $150,000. Not so, meaning the amount of it's going to cost you just to get this in. done. Right. To get her married cost, let's say, $150,000, probably a little more. So then, I don't know math, I'm a dropout, but uh, what's the 2% of 150? So it's uh, 3000 3, to $4,000. Someone that's giving a, a half a million dollar nadin, then, then 2% is 25, uh, is whatever. You don't have to answer the question. So I'm guessing you're not saying. I don't, don't, don't think anyone based like on that. No, no, that no, 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 I'm just saying. So, no, but so that, I, that's I, a fair starting point, because right. let's have this conversation. Like I said, people right. are watching this and let them know, because so no one has a clue. There's no, you can't right. Google how much a Shadchan is. So, so I, I spoke to Rabbanim uh, uh, like 10 years ago on if we could create a model in America on how much to give based on the Europe. That means 10 years ago, Shadchan should have been about $2,000 a side. Like just... Nothing to do with us. Just, and it doesn't make a difference if you're professional or not a professional. Not, uh, Shatran is the same amount. So really, so I spoke to a, a, a big Rav, and he told me that to change a minig, you have to have a certain amount of people. It's called minig So to do minig what people give, 
you have to make a survey and you have to work on it. But I would say there is, there is no um, actual minigamadina on how much to give. Now, just if some people think about it a lot, a shatchan, it's in a, beyond that, it's a very stressful job. And it's very hard to have success, you know, on a high ratio of, you know, dates per, per thing. And, you know, when people understand that and they really want to give it to you, then people are very nice. Some people, they, they, it's the last thing they give and they try to bargain you down and like, you know, it turns a lot I of people I think only because it, it has the misfortune of coming at the same time as expenses. Right, also, like most if you would give an amount, before. if Ashat Khan would say, this is what we charge, so then people would give that. But the mice, we're all nice guys and we're not into the money and it's very nakashmak to say, I want this amount of money. There are Ashat Khan out there that throw a price tag and I think it's not nice, but they're bright, they're, they are right on a certain way that that's the only way they can keep doing it, and this is the only way they can keep doing it. You need I, them to do it. I would say many, many, many shatchanim burnt out because uh, I have a very good friend. He was a great shatchan, and, and he burnt out because he did a real hard shidduch, and they were like uh, nibbling on $650, and he was like, am I normal? I'm going into real estate in Lakewood, and, you know, and he never, we lost. I, I, you know, so there's no really rule. Most people have a... Basic idea. Yeah, I learned, I believe, seem to yeah, have I thoughts on this. Talking. No, the question you asked originally, going into a year thinking, you're right, you have a family to support, and you don't know that any shidduch is going to come from it. All the effort that you put and in. And kids that you're going to have to pay shidduch for. Right? That means right. you're saying, your you, life. You, 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 could, you could go months at a time without making shidduch. You could have a run that you made a bunch of them. But even the one, if, you, if you make a bunch of those, doesn't mean you're getting major shidduch either to pay for the months that don't happen. It is a very stressful thing that, you know, you're doing a job because the bottom line, this is a job where you don't know when you start the year you, you, anything's going to come from it. Baruch Hashem, it's worked out. You know, halavai vaita for everybody. But vaita, but I just want to add that, um, so it's, it's a good question, and Baruch Hashem, you know, we're all, we're all making shidduchim, so we've been able to survive. There, was, there are extra things that have taken off the last few years. For example, uh, we have an organization which is an amazing organization called Kesher. It's an organization in Lakewood where there's a team of maybe 20 Shatchanim that get together and 25 Shatchanim. So we all get, the, the amazing thing about it is that the, the Kesher organization focuses on girls that need need help, not, not the easy ones. You know. They have meetings once a month where they bring down girls from all across the United States different cities, different communities, different shuls, things like that, mm -hmm. where they got to meet Shadchanim, which they usually wouldn't get a chance to meet on one night. They can meet 15, 20 Shadchanim. And you, you, I don't know, you work for Kesha? You work so with Kesha? With Kesha. My there's, also a lot of regular, there's also a lot of easy girls there. Just they, it's very random. They try to let everyone get a spot. That means any girl calls up Kesha to put me in your yeah. database. Yeah, all girls exactly. they, and what, I don't get what the idea is. What? They're all wonderful girls. I didn't mean to say that, uh, but, but, you know, some, some people have it easier than others, and a, a good percentage of the girls are ones that need the extra so what push. Okay. So the idea is that we come in there, I come twice a week, I'm not sure how, and, 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 and we try to, A, help the... Oh, you, and you actually meet girls? No, well, we two meet, different things. The meetings take place about every six weeks that we meet uh, the girls 15, 20 the girls. Now, no, no, I'm saying the, the meeting the girls take, takes place every six weeks around. Every, um, and we meet every, every five, six weeks, and we meet about 20 at a time. And we get together, we come to the office, we teach the Brainstorm. ladies. First, we tell them about boys, because the ladies don't have the same access that we have to the because boys, because so, we're in the yeshiva, we're able to go in there. So we tell them about different boys, so they're able to come up with ideas. And then we also have times that we sit together and we brainstorm and work on some of the girls. So it's a beautiful thing because this was like, I mean, so it's a, going on for many years. years. The Bender was, the, was oh, going right. on for years beforehand. It's Frommer is the Mrs. one Frommer, that they just had this idea to make to do so to help you out on supplements. Right. So Rabbi Bender took it upon himself wow. to to, to pay. He fundraises. A lot and of those people get paid. All those shachanos shachanos get paid for this. There's a lot of volunteers. A lot of people on salary. But one big thing is a lot of the new shachanos of the last five ten years are all product of sitting and hanging around these shachanos and. And it's a shidduch and, uh, office of 20 ladies who got yes. paid full-time jobs? No, not no. All. some volunteers, not some all. work, and a lot of people just, a lot of startup shadchanim do very but well. But there's no funding, it's all fundraised. Yeah. 
Yeah, but the beauty of it this way, you know that in a month that you not didn't make a shidduch, you know that you're getting a paycheck. Right, it's because you're the, it's only you three? Who work no, with the there's, no others. there's other people. But that means at least there's, so it's a win on both sides. It's a win for the girls and wins that keeps the shadchanim, that you at least know that there's something coming in. And, and his goal is to let a shadchan be a shadchan. They don't ask, he doesn't ask questions. Who did you read? What did you read? What did you do? Just keep on doing what Wow, you mean they're not giving every night feed in right. how many? Right. Right. right, Because a lot of times when you, those organizations, you met their people. Kesha? This, this name this People should give them money because it's a publicly funded thing? It's a, it's a, it and is. Why did, why did they open it in Lakewood and not, not where they, they are, the benders? Because Clyde's well, This opened about 10, 15 years ago in Lakewood, in Lakewood. by Mrs. Frommer. Um, but it wasn't, um, Ray Bender took it upon himself to be able to pay Big salary. bigger salaries. Amazing. So for the and first time, there's a, something that a shachan can get if they're associated with this. And you said you, you, you counsel all the younger, what, what, what would you tell them? There's a few, there's a few new young it. men shachanim that come to the office every single day. They're doing very nicely, very nice people. We give them a shout out. It's to a very them. interesting thing. I've, I, I know this from you in the past, Maya. You told us, in, in any other profession, you obviously don't want competition, right? You know, so as much as people say, oh, I wish there was more uh, from male writers, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they could move to Israel. <laughs> but you don't, know, Mamish. Now, you know, if you're talking and you help and you try to be a good guy, and but maybe not too many, right? You know, and you guys are always looking to encourage more people to watch Shadokhan, right? That means you, are, if a young guy comes to you and BMG says, I'd be a you say yes. We work together. Yeah, we help. Yeah, now also, we, we train them in. Um, I, I try to give a few Shadokh courses for Shadokhanim to help them be Shadokhanim because. Again, a lot of people have talent, and we need tons of new uh, There's plenty of room for competition, and uh, even with all us living in the same area. Okay, we, so each of you, but it's not fair, because the other two are going to have time to think. Um, we, we're going to start to cut this one, because I don't want you to have time to prepare an answer. Give me 30 seconds why someone should be a shadchan. It sounds like it's not such an easy life. Go. Um, <clears throat> so if you, have, if, if, if you could help Klai Yisrael in a very specific way, that today's Shadokhan is definitely one of the biggest things in Klai Yisrael. And if you could, first of all, if you build a, make a shidduch, it's you have dairis of dairis. There's an unbelievable amount of schar and pleasure. And it's something that is so needed. And, and if you could somehow structure your life that it doesn't actually take over your life, it, it's just the most satisfying thing is to make a shidduch. Shlema. As we all know, shidduchim is such a big need in today's generation. And uh, that's what keeps us going, the, the people and, uh, that, that need it, and how, how could you stop? Another thing that I, I was just in Eretz Yisrael, and I met, a, I would say, five, six boys, where I was the parent shatchan, including your own son. And I can't tell you, it was the most uh, satisfying thing. It, was, it felt so good, you know, to see grown-up kids that, uh, you know, makes it, makes it worthwhile. Wow, that must be something. Repeat the question again. <laughs> if you could talk to a young guy, he could do a lot of things. So real estate's down now, I get it. But he could still go on Amazon and, and make a lot of money. Why should he go into Shadduchim? He wants to have a panasa. Everybody wants to do good for Kali Yisrael. Give me a 30-second pitch. Shadduchim, to be a good Shadduchim, you have to be talented with people, nothing to talk about. You have to have a certain level of insight. I mean, you have to be a smart guy in understanding people. You have to have a lot of energy. If you have those three skills, you could do anything. So why should I be a Shadduchim? It's a very hard thing to expect people to go into it, especially the fact that shadduchim are very hard to make, and your successes, in even the most successful shadduchim in any given year, could let's say make 35, 40 shadduchim, let's say, on his best year, and that's a lot. So again, you have to have a calling that this is what you want to do. You want to help out the world, and it's a beautiful thing because the sipa you get when, when something does happen when shidduch does happen, is, is, is the most unbelievable feeling. You go to a chasana, and like, you, 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 you just sometimes, you, you get emotional. You stand there on the side, and like, no, it's, I just happen to have made a shidduch of, of a boy who doesn't have parents, both parents. It's like, I went to the bar, it was like, oh my gosh, it's like, and he was taken in by a beautiful family, and the, the feeling is unbelievable. It's, it's beautiful. Now, how do you deal? You, you see a lot of pain and a lot of failure every day. That means you deal with people. I'm sure there's people that you want to help so badly, girls and boys, and for whatever reason, the Renshaw didn't decide it's time yet, and the doors are not opening as fast as you'd like them to, and you have to face them and see them again and again. Where, where do you find chizak and strength? And you, It's a very debilitating, emotionally debilitating job. Where do you, where do you find the, the chizak and, and what? What keeps you going? What, what keeps them going? What would... So it's a hard question because uh, sometimes it's very hard. You go, uh, you know, you work. First of all, a lot of people don't know that you're working for them. 
and you try Shadokim, you try Shadokim, and then they see you and they think that you didn't help them and you really did, but you don't want to tell them that you got to know. It's very, it's, you're, you're, you're sort of, your whole life is like on the edge, you're on a tightrope and you want to always help people and you just, there's a lot of joy and there's also pain. So you have to learn how to, uh, what's the word, compartmentalize it. What would you tell those people? What are you telling Right. That means uh, the, the real, real chizik at the end of the day, without all our stuff, the Gemara in Moit Khan, the famous story that uh, Rabbi Yudha heard uh, someone davening to marry a certain girl, I think it was Shmuel, and Shmuel said, don't daven for a specific girl. Why? Because if it's the wrong one, you're going to end up being kaifer ba, it's a shayla had to learn, we're not going to discuss it. And he says, if not, loy tezel mine, that's lost to the Gemara. That, because she's not going to leave you. It means Hashem decides who you're marrying, and that's life. Loi tezelmina means your bashar is not running away from you. Do so, you see that every day? Do you no, see evidence of? Unfo- you know, unfortunately, we don't because uh, unfortunately the singles on the boys' side and the girls' side that you don't see the nice. No, but I'm saying, do you have enough? Rabbi Lapiansky has said more than once that you know I asked him a lot about what I do for a living and writing stories. Like you, you know, have these stories come out and you read the Ramayelach Biderman pamphlet and every guy who missed the plane was and every guy who met that guy ended up. So he says, no, not every story has a happy ending, but the Ben Shalom shows you just enough that you should know that every story has a happy ending. So sometimes he lets you see it to keep you going, to give right. you the chizuk to know that I orchestrated it's every actually, story. Do you see that in Shadokim too? Do you see enough happy things you say, wow? Totally. You do? Yes, of course. You see enough things you say, wow, years, I'm cha-, and boom. 100%. You, you see a lot of that. Actually, I listened to Rebel Lepiansky, and he was giving a shir on Rus, and he was saying one of the differences between, from the Nachas Yosef, he was saying one of the differences between Rus and by Eiv, he said by Rus, they saw all the stuff leading into the good. You saw all the tragedy, but you saw the good how you saw how it evolved into the good ending. By Eiv, it was just bad and it turned good. So he said there. So I do see, let's say, even people that have certain challenges. Sometimes you see how, in the long run, you have to have a lot of patience. How it landed them where they're supposed to be. So you do see a lot of siyat tishmaya, and I guess that's the chizuk. Yeah, you mentioned people's challenges. What, what would you tell them? Somebody well, suffers from some kind of mild disorder or less mild. So they don't really know what to say. There's no clear answer. Uh, should they go? Should they say it before? Then no one's going to go out with them. If they don't say it before, then they're just going to set themselves up for failure because they'll go out on a few dates and then they'll say, by the way, I suffer or whatever. This is my situation. And then it's over. And w- 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 how, what are they supposed to do? They're walking into... into so anyone that has a challenge, I would say it's Kedai to discuss. I would say all three of us are people that A, are trustworthy that we're not going to talk to other people about it. You know, it's not going to come out. But also that you could try to guide the people and, and say who's going to be okay with whatever challenge oh, they yeah, have. You're saying, you're saying if somebody has Rahman al-Tsan, they suffer from OCD, bipolar, very severe anxiety, whatever that can be, just talk this out of it. So they go four times, they'll like each other, and then they're going to tell them, and then they'll say, I'll get back to you. And I assume in most cases, not really, we're not sure. And, and so you're saying, come to either of you before, that means secrecy is obviously very discreet. the most important. I don't get drunk on Purim because I have too many secrets. Because you have. <laughs> wow. Same thing. Really? <laughs> I've said that for years. Really? I won't drink because I don't know what will come Because out. you know too much. <laughs> wow. That could be so for other reasons. The, 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 the person so, comes to you and they tell you, this is my thing. That means besides that, there are secrets. Safe. There are girls or boys, depending on what it is who are either dealing with similar things or willing to overlook it because, and you'll put them together? Yeah, I mean, sometimes you put two people together that both have some sort of challenge, but other times there could be other reasons why someone would go for a person with, you know, maybe something in the family that's, whatever it is. Uh, but you have a database in your mind of people. But it's not, it's not so public. They, the, pe- most people try the regular way till they've burnt enough times. They'll go out to the 24 years old, and you never understand why it's such a great boy, you're still single. Then all of a sudden, one day you get a phone call, blocked number. You pick up the phone, hi, I don't want to say my name. I have a son who, excellent boy, but suffers from what am I, whatever it might be. I'd rather not tell you my name, but do you have girls that could be compatible for such a type of thing? So the parents block the number, they call you up, and, and you probably know who it is because you know the... Yes Whatever. or no, it depends Irrelevant. if you came across it in a different story. So then know. they say, I'm not telling you my name, but here's the situation. Yeah. And what would you say? It, it's very limiting because... So you would say, come to me straight. That's what you're saying from you. That's, that's what you like, wow. I, I had a shirk that was going out. We went out five times. They were on cloud nine. It was unbelievable. All of a sudden, 
was an out-of-town girl. The boy flew out there. The next day I get a phone call, it's over. I said, and the girl said I wasn't so discreet. They said, it's not over because of us. Obviously he flew out there, told them something was wrong with himself, and they couldn't move forward. You know, moving, you know that boy I had in the back of my mind, obviously if the, something comes up, you know, this is the type of guy you want to go to, but it's not but the boy told me. But you hadn't known before you had the shut-off. No, I didn't know anything. So I, you wish I you would have known before. Know. I still didn't know. The boy didn't tell me afterwards either. He moved along. He tried regular, you know. He, he kept going, thinking that He kept that on going, hoping that some, at some point he's going to, you and, know. And you're saying you would prefer, come to me, l'chat It depends. Come to they have to be comfortable doing that. I mean, this really, I had discussed with you, I, I, I really think this is a beautiful idea that I, I wanted to speak to Tara Masaira, that there should be somebody in every 12th grade, there should be a person designated to call every single 12th grade school, boy or girl, and call them and say, hi, I'm calling from Tyra Masaira. If there's any child in your school who has any type of medical situation, psychological, mental, whatever it might be, we will create a file for them. You don't have to tell us anything more. Just your, your, what it's about. This way, when that child in four years now, with the coming of Shidduch age, and they have a problem, and they're frustrated because every time they try to go out where... After the tell you, after the fourth date, you have to tell the other side, and they're frustrated. They can come back to Tyrone and say, "Listen, I am file number twenty-six. Do you have something which is compatible with my child situation?" You can't make a shidduch based on that. It's a start. You can't just two it's people that have a problem. It has uh, to be the same problem. It's not the same problem. It has to be a shidduch. It can't uh, no, be. Okay, but why can't you do what he's saying? I just come to you, and then you see the face, and you see the person. It has to be. It's not just based on a problem. But, but second, I'm hearing something. I'm hearing a chiddush. I never heard. I, I, I'm not that experienced in shidduch. But you're saying something here that sounds groundbreaking to me, unless I'm missing it. That people who have any kind of issues, and there are many, and, and Baruch Hashem, I think Klai Yisrael has availed themselves to excellent therapy services, and more and more parents are realizing that at, at the stigma. And great credit to Mishpacha magazine and others that talk about this because that uh, that um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's uh, unsafe to say that probably I would say at least two out of the people in this room are ADHD for sure. I have the whole alphabet. Maybe three for sure. Um, I, I, we don't have problems saying these things anymore. We're maybe even a little proud of it. There's a lot of stigma has gone down. You're saying come to me. Yes, you could save with me. And I know girls who suffer from those same things, or if they don't suffer from it, are dealing with the same things. And you could have a happy life instead of going through this. But, this but you know, how, how many do you think you know, Shlomo? Tell so how many think you know. What, uh, what? People with problems. Uh, numbers or a number. Throw out a number. How many bachrim are you thinking she you know? Actual bachrim. Yes. I'd rather not. I'm not whatever. I don't. I don't know a lot. Yeah, I do. I'm not, not maybe a lot. Not I don't want to make Maybe if they uh, came out of here knowing that they could tell you the truth and they could finally be free of this burden. Imagine, I'm thinking about the Gehenna of somebody, boy or girl, is going out knowing that they're going to have to say something that's going to end it. And so what, I, even a first date's not exciting. So I didn't take my chance to dash, and now I'm going to take my chance. You, you did, so but I, you could, I you, you could still, you could like still, uh, there's a time, so there's a time. I, I, I think, I, I like, uh, I, I, I like always going back to, like, the Makar. Like, it, 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 there's no Tuvas farm that discuss when to discuss a medical issue. Now, the reason is because in Europe, there was no dating time. So either you have to say, or you don't have to say. There was no, there was no space, like, oh, by the third date. So you, you sat down for an hour and you got engaged. So all the place can discuss what has to be told before you get married. If it's a mechachtois, if it's not a mechachtois. See, the Rav Moshe Zetzal was the first one to discuss. A girl had a certain issue, and he said maybe discuss it, go out a few times, and then discuss it, and then evolved into the third date, fourth date. I, I have sort of a, 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 a one... A, a, a line that I believe very strongly, that something that's life-altering, life-altering means it's life-altering, then you don't wait for the third, fourth day to say that. That has to be done before, and maybe like Mayor Levy or like Shlomo Lewinstein said, come to the Shatchan and be open, and they'll be discreet, and they'll try to figure something out. But if you pop out something on a fourth date that's life-altering, I personally don't think that's right. If something that's Something that's hard or okay, complicated. Okay, it's different in a different school. Right, 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 right. Right. No, no, no. Because the way no, 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 the Hasidic no, community deals with it. Well, no, 100%. This. So I just think that there are certain things. You have to speak to a very chash varav, not just a person that has a shul in his basement. You have to have someone that's experienced with medical and, 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 and maybe a doctor and someone with com- You need someone with common sense. I think that's a big problem today is that a lot of times it's being done in a way without common sense and you need someone that has common sense. And I do think it's a good idea, and a lot of people do confide with me that they have an issue, and I try to find, a, it could be a different type of challenge. There's, sometimes there's actual mom, someone has a problem, and then there's a shidduch mom, 
let's say someone just has a broken shidduch. There's nothing wrong, but they have some kind of challenge, a sorry challenge, and they're willing to take something. So I, I think it is very smart to be in, uh, open with a shatkan before. Um, obviously, uh, honest and discreet shatkan. And there are people that deal exclusively with medical shidduchim. I know everyone knows Mrs. Right, Most. And then Mrs. it becomes Spiegel, like a little bit of a stigma. Right, no, right. I'm, I'm saying something new here, which no, is her success not is you special. never know what shidduch she made. Right, she's, she's a non... She, she, no her, her, she nobody knows any shidduchim she made. What does she do? What does she do? Who's the No, they don't, talk, they don't advertise it. Put on someone else's name. <laughs> well, I wanted to just ask a, a side question that you made me think of. It's, I'm curious to your reaction to this thing. Just off topic a minute. Somebody told me this week that they have, they have an excellent son. They have an excellent daughter. Every child calls for the son because everybody wants him. She says, okay, first five minutes for the daughter. You like, don't like, right, wrong. So I actually have it also. It, it sounds a little. I have a son and I have a daughter in Shalokim. And, you know, I, I always used to make a joke that for a son you need a secretary and for a girl you need an agent. And, Unfortunately, you do see it. You could have an excellent girl and an excellent boy, and this is one of the million dollar questions. Why is there such a disproportion? Every girl needs one boy, so it's something, something really doesn't make sense. But, um, you know, I can't, there are definitely some boys that have quiet phone calls and girls that get a ton of calls. So there definitely is not do you, an automatic do you boy girl. approve of the, someone doing that? Or not? Do you think it's disgusting? The, I, it's I, I, disgusting. Like, uh, someone just read me. It, it, it depends how serious they are. It depends how serious they are about it. It's not any different. Somebody when you call up a rent show, they say, "Why did you pick this idea for my child? What made you think so?" So he said, "Tell him. You know, I took a dartboard, I threw a dart, and landed on that name. That's why I called you." And they laughed. So, and, and you call me back tomorrow with a yes. But one thing I think is not fair: if people call you up and say, "Can you work on my daughter?" and then I'll say, "Oh, your son's engaged." And like, no, 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 but like, we really don't need you. So then I say my famous thing in the Reader's Digest, I once saw that there's a store that says we buy garbage and we sell antiques, right? <laughs> so, so for you, it's garbage. So like that, I get, I, I really don't appreciate that. Like they'll tell me work, work on my daughter, but my son's off limits from you. That I, that I don't appreciate. And people do that because they understand. There are, it depends. There's some people that are not like that. But let's say for me, if someone reads my shit, my but son's shit, I'll say, by the way, do you mind just keeping my daughter in mind? But what, I'll never okay, use another question. Leverage. The mothers of boys, um, I don't know if you call it like a soft yes or something. Like, they change. The rules suddenly change. That if you have a girl and you get the boy is either a tenth of it, you better you have like 15 seconds to answer. Right. Or else you're not going to get it. Like, as if your child is less important because of their gender, Excellent. and you don't have to say, that's, that's okay? So, no. so, one, so, so one, thing, no. one thing we do, and all the Shatran have the same idea, we go to the boy first to try to get a yes from the boy. Now the reason is, it's really to protect the girls, because since there's so many more, uh, boys are getting so many more names, so so many girls are getting no's. So if you tell 10 girls, look into this boy, and they all come back with a yes, and nine of them are getting no, so you're going to end up hurting the girl. Therefore, it was always done that come with a full yes. Now, there's a new thing that the, the, the generation became so weak that the parents are scared to tell their boy that they might get a no. So I saw, this mom is recently, last year, that they'll say, can we give you a soft yes, feel them out, and then if they say, yeah, we're going to continue listening, and I'm not a nice guy. I'm not such a nice guy. And my answer to like my, my son might, not. absolutely not. My absolutely son is might why the parents are doing it, because the son might get her? That, yeah. That's no, my no, what about the daughter's feelings? The daughter gets no. No, so this is rigged against the girls again. Because the girl... No, no I, I said to them, I said, nine times out of ten, you'll do that. You come back... You come they should the, say no to the girl after you. Say no to the girl, so yeah. you, you go back, to, you go to the girl and say, listen, the boy's interested. They're not finished, but if you show an interest... I could get you in name. their ear, they heard you say, yes. they got a yes. They come back a day later, oh, he sounds great. Could you get us a yes? You come back to the boy, oh, the yes. one that we gave a yes to three months ago just came back last night said yes. I won't do it. I won't do it. Right. Well, I, I, I wait for the full So yes. let, let me hear each of you say, without you, Mayor, what would your parents have their oldest child, they're starting to look at boy, girl, make a difference. Tell me like the things that you would want from them, that you expect them going in. Know well, this. You, meet, you meet them. You get a feel. If you, if you're what does it mean to be a mensch in Shadokhan? What would you expect from parents? Of a boy, let's say. Only work with you? That means... No. no you wouldn't want that. But then you don't have this problem of saying yes. No, you, you can't... It, 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 I, I, get, I get such a kick out of it. When people come to meet you, like they, they seem like your best friend. And you're thinking, wow, their mom is thinking you're going to be the shah. Then you go to a chas and you see them talking to a different shah. They look even more friendly with that other shah. And thinking like, you know, like, oh, I thought I was the, I was the shah. Uh -huh. People have to try. You have to throw your, your, your coins into every, you know. Go up to try it and see where it goes. You're, let's just say that you're not seeing the best part of people. Like, how do you keep an eye on Taiva? You're seeing parts. You, you do see when they come. They, they when they come, they're they're well behaved. You know? like, <laughs> That's like, like you know, when you're going through ideas and you see, you f feel the wife signaling to the husband, like, you know, like 
like, don't say that, don't say this. Well, like, you know, somebody kicked on the table, I said they kicked you, you know what I'm saying? It, it, <laughs> of there, let's go, Shalik mentioned boys and girls on the crisis. I, I don't know data and numbers, and this is not a topic that we could sit here in 20 minutes or so. And th- there are more boys coming out of the system, let's say. A lot of efforts over the last few years from, from well funded efforts with Gadalia Sorrell at, at the helm in many cases to push boys to where any younger. Has it made a difference? Are you seeing a big difference? If you're mature enough, yes. If you're not mature, just you're to say well, If you're mature enough, then a boy should go out younger. Yes, then why not? Just a quick question. Boy's 21, he's mature enough to get married, but he's really learning well and he wants to go to HL for a year. And we all know, everybody learned in HL knows that if it worked, then it's invaluable. It changes your whole life. So you should give up on that year. I'm just curious for that. So uh, it, 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 it's a very. It, I, it, the problem is that it became like a, a talk, but it's really there's halacha and then there's ashkafa. The halacha is that you just, the, it's often the Shulchan Aruch go up seven aleph from Beis and Avnezer. A boy has to get married at twenty. Now there's a clause that if you're really sitting and learning and you're not going to worry about money and you're not going to think about things that you shouldn't, then you're allowed to wait. And the marshal and the mashmur says the maximum is twenty five. So the mechaber gives you a twenty to twenty five um, thing. Now. The Rosh Hashivas, Rosh Hashach, and all the G'daylim, they it was the age was 21, 22, but they had like guidelines. A boy has to be real sitting and learning. So if a boy comes and says, listen, I want to get married, and I remember Rav Chaim Stein in Cleveland, that's all his yard said was last week, he also said, if a Bach is starting to talk about that he wants to get married, let him get married. Now, I spoke to come out all the Rosh Hashivas. It's not the question of letting him, the question is something right. else. No, so the question is, a boy's 21 and wants to get married, there's no reason not to get married. Are you seeing a change? You can learn that? better. If a guy says, so go, go to Israel, or Mayor Stern, I know he's very into, go go after when you're married. And, and Say and boys go straight to Israel, to like with a lot of them. Yeah, but I'm just saying that you can learn and you can learn. Are you learn. seeing that it, it's working, this idea of bringing more boys into the market? I, I, I no, think no, guys are starting. Not enough more boys. It's becoming more accepted. It's not a revolution, but it's coming definitely more accepted. But there is a trickle of more boys coming in. You can read a 21-year-old boy, you and they're not going to say, why is he so young? I just had a boy 20. He was still in learning in a, a local yeshiva, and he made his mind. His father called me up. My son wants to get married. And I, got, I actually think he's getting engaged tonight, but he's turning 20 on Rich Chalilish Av. He's young, but he wants to get married, and he's mature. And boys Who are, decides maturity? The parents? So I asked the yeshiva who decides the maturity. He goes, I know my boys, but usually the yeshiva should say. Usually the parents know if he's mature, he wants to get married. Let him get it was married. a trip. I, I didn't follow up to, like, people went from America to Israel to Michelle Hirsch to. What's that? What's that story? Is the it other things? Like the, do they the, move the needle? What do they want to do? It sounds like there's the, 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 it, over time, and I think it's a, a hashpa from the world. If you look at the census on in America, when people got married in the last sixty years, it went up eight years. That means in 1940, the average age was 23, and and it went up to 30. So I think we did have hashpa from the Jewish world, and guys are lazy and they want to get married later. And there is a pushback that boys should start much younger, cut out maybe a, a year of extra, uh, you know, in base magic, or instead of kindergarten starting. You know, there's different ways how to bring in the boys a year early, which will be a huge thing for Claudius role if that happens. Do we need, so you're saying, then you, but you guys are a lot situated in Lakewood and the yeshivas. Now that you're opening up to that age, you don't know every bacher who's 20. That means how should people even... It happened. Most they'll end up in Lakewood. If, they, well, if, they cut, if, they, if they're getting married early, they'll come to Lakewood earlier. A lot of them don't go to Lakewood. They go to Tel Aviv. That's good. A bunch of wives. You know who we know. And we're right? not the only shatchan in the world. There's hundreds of people who are shatchanim, and they get married. We'll make our ways around. To let, let's see, let's see it happen. Hopefully, the sleeping on demon yeah. floors. Remeir, what 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 would you tell? Uh, like like you know, shana shana couples between themselves don't always have what to talk about, so they end up getting shadokim. That becomes like a fun activity for. Shadow Rishayna between Bogle and, and Valdadesh, and, and the people who are friendly with other couples, maybe, like, does that work for you? It's, it's a big, what would you tell them? Because they have a lot of passion to Rishayna. Usually, they're both coming into marriage with a lot of single friends who they want to help. It's also, they, they're still, like, rearing to go. Does it work? And they usually try once or twice, they get shot out of the sky, and they, and they give up. What do you mean, shot out of the sky? They call, it they call up and say, how do you know my son? How, like, how old are you? You're a well, you just got married, you think it's a good idea? And they don't try again. So, but Why aren't you training them? What, what would you do for... So there's going to be a new thing, a new initiative coming out. Stay tuned about yeah. how to... For real? For real. Okay. To encourage young couples to, if they don't want to read the Shalach themselves, to give over the ideas to Shalchanim to read it for them. It'll, it's... it's <laughs> I mean, so no, so come I, up with the idea, and when you call the mother, you have more credibility. Right? Correct. So when I give a Shalach course, I started off, I said, to protect burnout, the best thing is... First, bounce your idea off a shatchan. Call Lewinstein, Levy, call whoever you want, and say, listen, is this basically a good idea? Then have the shatchan read it, and you'll get your third, whatever the halacha is, 
and then that saves second, you from burnout. Because the money is in their heads a little bit. I mean, no, because they, they work hard, and then they come. They don't. They, the wife. So you factor in the finances. You factor too. in the finances, and I don't care. You want We're not cutting you out of a deal. You're, you're getting part of it. You're not going to burn out. You're going to be encouraged. So it is a lot for just the idea, and then you get out of the yeah. way. You don't have to do the hard work. Right. Mean. So you're getting free money. You you speak to the shadchan to make sure that your ideas are. And how are they with you? How do they give over the idea to you? You send a text, and we're, we're, we we really are oh, people uh, like stereotype shadchanim. If you take my phone right now, I don't mind looking at it now. But uh, we respond to most most people. Uh, there's still uh, a lot uh, that we don't. Uh, but we're most. ending anyhow. Yeah, so but Mayor, like, Mayor's getting, program. Getting is. back to what you were asking, you don't need a program for that. But the there's, just call a, a shot and say just. Yeah, but but there is something that we are going to do, whether Tzaddik agrees with it or not, which is fine. It's going to be called Newly Reds. It's going to be Newly Reds. Newly Reds. It sounds like a girls' organization. Great name. That's fine. It's like a camp. It's going to be for anybody. Calm him down, please. (laughs) (laughs) Anybody (laughs) ages 19 to 99 could read a shidduch this way. You send it in. It's going to be emailed over to the secretary. It's going to be given over to the cashier office in Lakewood. As we expand, it will be given over to all shidduch offices across. Let's say somebody had an idea, a boy from Houston and a girl from Alabama. The Lakewood Shachanam are not going to know that person, but the Houston office might, so you're going to go give over the idea to them. If any idea is going to come from, if a date comes from this, the young couple is going to be compensated. It's going to be, details will be forthcoming. It will be in the Mishpacha magazine. Um, wow, well, right I, I can do it. So you guys really don't stop. Like you, you yeah, like, so I, 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 I have just to say, I know a lot about Zechamatel, that, you know, the character, the name is of Shlomo's mother, and that we've been in touch over the years, and I've reached out to you, Mary, for help, for Hassanam, I knew who were in financial very quickly, because really at a time, there, there were, there's a lot of achnas kala. Not every chassan is able to get the hat, suit, machzayim, jewelry, whatever he needed. And, and you guys saw that need, and you ended up doing fundraising besides everything else you do. So you created this organization, Al Shem of Shlema's mother. Yeah, the, and this year is probably going to be $1.8 million is going out to chassan. Given out to chassan, right? That and how many chassan? So Over 400? You, 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 About, yeah. you got. I'm going to end with this thought. You, you've done something remarkable. And you guys have, have changed. The the new definition of a shadchan is uh, about a psychologist asking a uh, social activist. You're doing, you're doing a lot of things in the course of the day. Thank you for taking time to come in. The Rosh Hashanah should Thanks. crown your efforts with that slacha. We should share some Thank you for being here. Thanks for having us.